Hi, and welcome back. So today in this video, we're going to be looking at how to solve for the present value and uh, future value of ordinary general annuity using the financial calculator, the Texas uh, instrument BA2+. Plus. So let's go ahead and get started. So here's a quick recap from our types of annuity video. Uh, you can check out the link down in the description below. Uh, we know that ordinary annuity is is an annuity when the payments are made at the end of each payment period. So let's assume that you had an investment for $100 and you're making it and you're signing up from it from January 1st to December 31st. That was your payment period, typically a year. Uh, the payment would be due at the end of the year, right? And now there, there are two types of annuities where the or, in, in an ordinary simple annuity, the interest compounding, and the payment period, the frequency for both of them would be the same, right? So the interest is being compounded yearly, the payment would be made yearly as well. Whereas in an ordinary general annuity, which this video covers, the interest compounding and the payment periods are not the same. So the frequency between the two are not the same. So this one could be monthly, bi-weekly, semi-annually, or whatever the reason is, whatever the situation is, this will not meet it. It will be different right okay so now let's look at a question for ordinary general annuity so here we have a question that states that at the end of every month sarah invests 1500 dollars in a portfolio earning 5.5 percent compound quarterly if sarah contributes for 10 years what would be the total value of her investment at the end of 10 years now we know that this is an annuity question because there's equal sum of payment for a fixed term so there's an equal sum, so there's 1,500 and it's for 10 years. More importantly, this is an ordinary general annuity because the payments are made at the end of every period and the frequency between the interest rate, 5.5% compounded quarterly, and the payment or the installment, uh, 1,500, at the end of every month, they don't match. That's why we have an ordinary general annuity. Right? So now what we can do is use the time value of money to solve for this question. And before we do that, the first thing to do with the time value of money question is to draw out a timeline. So the first thing is to draw out the timeline where we see that it's 5.5% compounded quarterly. It's for, for the whole 10 year period or for the whole time period, right? The next thing we know is that Sarah is investing the money for 15, investing the $1,500 on a monthly basis, right? So we do have to calculate the total number of payments that Sarah is going to be investing the money for. And the way we can calculate that n number of payments or n number of terms is simply by taking the number of years or the number of time years that Sarah is investing the money for and multiply that by the frequency of Sarah's uh, installment or investment, right? So that in that case, we have 10 years because the time period is 10. Multiply that by 12 because she's in, so investing the money at the end of every month and we get 120 payments. So Sarah has to put down 1500 for the next 120 months, right? Now, the question is, we have all the information, but there's additional stuff that question is asking us. What's that? It's asking us to calculate the total value of Sarah's investment at the end of 10 years. So it's practically asking us to calculate the future value of the annuity. So in order to do that, we have to do is now take this information, put it into uh, the variables for time value of money, and then put it into our financial calculator and solve for the future value. So let's first put it into the ordered form for the TVM, right? Time value of money variables. For the time value of money variables, we have an N, right? Which is number of payments, which is our number of terms is 120. Your interest rate, right, is 5.5%. And the compounding frequency is four. The reason why it's four is because it's compounded quarterly, four quarters in a year. We don't have any present value. Sarah is not making any installments right now or anything like that, right? And then we have a payment, which is for negative 1500. The reason why this is a negative, and it's this emphasis on negative is because that the payment is going out of her pocket, right? Consider as the payment is going out of her pocket into an investment firm, right? So she's losing money right now, like that type of a thing. She's giving it away. It's, she's not receiving the money. So that's why you put it in as a negative. If you don't put this number in as a negative, you're going to get this future value as a negative. And that's going to be incorrect. So therefore, you have to put the correct 
situation in the PMT so that you get the correct future value route value. Now, the other thing is she's making the installment at the end of every month. So therefore, the frequency of the payments is 12, right? They're 12 months in a year. Now that we have all this information, let's go ahead and plug it into our calculator. The best practice when using a financial calculator is to begin by clearing off our inputs from our previous calculation. And the reason why we have to do this is because it reduces our chance of making an error uh, while calculating a answer for a time value of money. So we're just going to go ahead and clear off our inputs from our previous calculation if there are any. So we're just going to press the second function and clear TVM or future value and that just clears it off. Now we're going to enter in the time value of money inputs for this question. So it's 120, which is our N, right? Our I per Y is 5.5, so it's 5.5. Just hold on to your compounding frequency for now. Don't enter it in just yet. Our present value is zero, so that's zero for present value. Our PMT payment is 1,500. Remember, it's a negative payment. It's money outflow, right? Although you're getting it back, it's still an outflow. It's PMT is there. Now, we don't have a future value, so we don't need to enter anything in for that. Now we have to go back and input information for P per Y and C per Y. So how we do that is press the second function and we press I per Y. So we're at the page, at the, at the page or at the, at the scene where it shows us P per Y and C per Y inputs. So we can go ahead and put it in where our P per Y was 12 and we press enter. Now, if you see, if you have used this calculator before, if you know that it's going to defaultly set it to uh, 12 for C per Y as well. So we have to change that in this case because C per Y is different. So we're going to press 4 and press enter for C per Y. And therefore, we're just going to have everything set in where your 12 is for P per Y and 4, four for C per Y. Now, we have all our information input is. We're just going to press clear. We're going to press compute and future value. And this gives us the future value of uh, Sarah's investment, which is equal to $238,939.10. Therefore, the total value of Sarah's investment at the end of 10 years is equal to $238,939.10. Now, let's look at the next question. Okay, so here in this question, we see that Paul received a five-year loan from the bank at 2.5% compounded semi-annually. Paul makes installment payments of $3,000 at the end of every quarter to settle the loan. What was the initial loan amount Paul received from the bank? Again, we know that this is a nudity question because we have $3,000 equal sum of payment for a definite period of time, which is five years. We know this is an, this is an ordinary general annuity because the $3,000 are made at the end of every quarter and the frequency is obviously every quarter, whereas the 2.5% is compounded semi-annually. So the compounding frequency with the payment does not match with the compounding frequency of the interest rate. So let's go ahead and use the information to draw out a timeline. So when we draw out a timeline, we see that it's 2.5% compounded semi-annually for the whole five-year period. The next thing is to give uh, in, in, give in on the information related to the payments. So we see that payments are made at the end of every quarter. So quarter one, $3,000. Quarter two, $3,000. All the way up to quarter N. Now what's quarter N? They're five years, right? The loans borrowed for five years. And the payments are made at the end of every quarter. So therefore, there are four quarters in a year. Multiply that by five years. So we get number of terms or number of payments is equal to 20. So there are 20 quarters. Now, in other words, Paul's going to make an payment for $3,000 for the next 20 quarters. Now, what is the question asking, right? More importantly, we have got this information. It's asking for the initial loan amount. So it's not asking for the final value of the loan. It's asking what Paul received at the beginning of the five-year loan that he started off with. So in that case, we're calculating the present value of the annuity. Now that we have all this information, let's go ahead and put it into our time value of money variables, right? So again, N, which is for number of terms and number of payments. We got 20 payments. We've already calculated that. I per Y given to us, it's 2.5%. Compounding frequency on that. 
is 2. Why? Because it's semi-annually, twice a year. Present value, we're trying to calculate that. That's why it's X. PMT, again, it's negative $3,000. Money is going out of our pocket. That's why it's negative. Payment per year is 4. 4 quarters in a year. Future value is equal to 0. Now let's put this information into a calculator and solve for PV. So for Paul, we have all the information for time value of money variable as well. So we're just going to go ahead and plug it in. But before we do that, we have to clear off the time value of money uh, inputs for our previous question. So we're just going to press second and clear TVM. So that just clears off our inputs, right? And then you can just press clear here, right? So it's gone. Double check. Yeah, it's gone. Uh, so for N, we have 20. So it's 20 is N. Our interest rate is 2.5%. Right, so I per Y is 2.5. PV, we don't have any PV just yet. We're looking to calculate it. 3,000 was our PMT, and it's remember it's a negative. He's making installment payments. Is that we don't have any future value, so it's zero. Now let's go ahead and change I per Y and P per Y. So it's second function and I per Y. Now it's set to our previous uh, question where it's 12 and 4, so we have to change this. This is one of the things that doesn't get cleared off when you use the second and clear TVM. This is one of the things that doesn't change in this financial calculator. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and change it. So we know that our P per Y is 4. We're going to press 4 and enter. And uh, we're going to have to change our C per Y to 2. So we're going to press 2 and enter. And just press clear to clear off everything. So we've entered in all the information. Now we're going to go ahead and compute for pre present value so we're just going to press cpt and pv and we get a value that fifty six thousand two hundred forty seven dollars and eighty four cents is the amount that paul borrowed so therefore that's the total value of paul's uh initial loan amount now that sums up this question uh that's all i had for ordinary general annuity if you really like this video please give it a thumbs up there are other videos related to annuity that you can check out. And if you like this video and if you if it helped you, please consider subscribing. Thank you.